instant fashion a necessity. Thank you, Ma. It is a necessity for us to grow. Because if we are not growing, if we are stagnant, that is a that is a sure way of backsliding. Anything that is not growing, we backslide. So it is a necessity for us to keep growing daily after day after day, so that we'll be able to attain these um, promises that is freely given to us. We, we should be able to be partaker of that um, uh, of the grace of God in our life. And we can see in verse one. Um, Apostle Paul introduced himself as a servant of God, and he also said, after, after he introduced himself, let me read it. After he introduced himself, Simon Peter, a servant of an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, his address is to them that has obtained like the same faith. Because that there are some people that they, they give their life, but they are not allowing the word of God to have full impact in their life. They just have the head knowledge, but they don't have the external outward, but the word of God is not making impact in their inward life. So, and the main thing, the main purpose of God saving us is that we might be partaker of his nature, that we might be able to, carry, to to live a life that, that is upright in his sight. So the faith that we, 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 we have should be a faith that is, a, that is genuine, that we have outward and inward effect in our life. Um, I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This brings us to subheading number two. Diligent pursuit of Christian version for fruitfulness. Diligent pursuit of Christian virtue for fruitfulness. Second Peter chapter one verses five to eleven. Can someone read for us? Second Peter one five. Second Peter chapter one five to eleven. Can you fast read that for us, please? Second Peter one five to seven. Five to seven. Five to seven. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. You can see that in this, after we have given our life to God, there is a need for us to grow. There is a need for us to pursue this virtue diligently, to seek for the virtue with all our heart. The Bible says, those that diligently seek me, they will find me. If, we, they, if, they, they, if they diligently seek me with the whole of their heart, we have to seek him diligently so that we will be particular of this um, basho. And this, um, <clears throat> after we have given our life, there is a need for us to grow thereby so that we will not be stagnant. We have to grow in grace. We have to add to our virtue, we have to have knowledge. The knowledge of God through his word, revealing to us the wide concept of God. And also, after we add knowledge, we have also have to add self-control, a disciplined life, how to spend our time, how to spend our money. In all that we do, we have to be disciplined. And after this self-control, we also have to add perseverance. Perseverance means an enduring unto the end. Even if the going is rough, Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. That means, consisted persistence of loss in the moment of temptation to keep us to the end. And I pray 
that we all, we will all persevere to the end in Jesus' name. And to perseverance, we should add godliness. This is the real fear of God, that holiness that comes through real concern to please him and to seek his approval rather than the approval of men. And to mourn when we fall short of this glory. We have to mourn when we sh come short of this glory. And to this godliness, we have to add godly kindness. This is our attitude to one another in the church. In the family of God, we have to live together in unity. We have to abide together in love. And we have to be merciful to them that hurt us. We shouldn't, there shouldn't be any malice between us. We have to live together in, in unity so that we can progress together. May God help us all in Jesus' name. And so brotherly kindness is Christian love which is charity, whereby we, we, we can be good to all men, which is the greatest, um, at, uh, the, great, the greatest, to love out of a pure heart. When we love each other, we have to love out of a pure heart, not holding back on anything. Let our love to each other be pure, and God will help us doing this in Jesus' name. And um, this, take it, this take us to the third subheading, beautiful reminder for the preservation of the truth. Beautiful reminder for the preservation of the truth. This is taken from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 to 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 to 21. I will read from here. But this as natural with the remembrance of these things. Though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Ye are thinking me as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Apostle Peter is addressing the people here and telling them that there is a need for him to keep reminding them of all these things. That in reminding them, they will be able to still be keep in the faith. That it is a necessity for him to keep on reminding us, uh, like when we, when we have um, our program, each time that the GS ministers to them is always reminding us of the thing of of the thing the good thing that we we have that we already have that we should hold on to it that we should hold on to it keep reminding us so that we will not um be uh, forgetful here or doer of the war and verse 14 knowing that shortly i must put off this my tabernacle even as our lord jesus christ has shown me Moreover, I will endure that ye may be able, after my disease, to have these things always in remembrance. He was telling them that this is the reason why I'm reminding you that even after I've passed and you people remember me, you will still remember what I've taught you about this life of holiness, about this life of um, uprightness, being adding virtue into our life day by day. So there is need for this remembrance so that uh, we will not be we will not fall away and for we have not followed cunning devised fables when he made known unto unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but we are high witnesses of his majesty he was trying to tell them when um in matthew chapter 17 on the mount of transfiguration that Apostle Peter, James, and John went together with Jesus. That he saw him. What he was telling them is not, it's not lie. He saw it in his own heart that this is real. I can see the glory. That is why he, keep, he had this serious confusion in him. That is why he's trying to tell them that this is not fake. This is real. So try to hold on to everything that I'm teaching you so that we all will be able to make it to the end in Jesus' name. 
So, the faithful apostle writes on the minister duty as to come, convey his message to believers, aware of the nearness of his death, as the Lord has revealed to him. He expresses his determination to put the brethren in remembrance of the truth they had known. Therefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the presence too. Yea, I think it me to steer you up by putting you in remembrance. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my disease, to have this thing always in remembrance. He chose the line of our Lord who instructed his disciples to remember the word that I said to you and promise to send the Holy Ghost who will all things to remembrance, whoever I said unto you. So he's trying to let them know that he's, 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 give, he's thinking this to them so that they will keep remembering whatever he has. Um, there is a need for him to remind them and to let them know that it is important so that after he has left, the Holy Spirit will be here to remind them of whatsoever he has already taught them. Yeah, we should be determined to do a lasting work that will outlive us. Believers must avail themselves of the opportunity and privilege of fellowship activity in order to have truth taught and rehearsed to them for their spiritual growth and stability. We should do an activity that will make sure that we make sure we are always stable in the faith. Believers have the responsibility of preserving the truth they have learned uh, and are currently established, lest they become forgetful of them. Let me ask this question. Why should ministers of Christ remind their hearers of the truth already learned? Why should ministers of Christ remind their hearers of the truth already learned? Why is it necessary for ministers to remind the hearer of the truth that they have already learned? Why is it necessary? Can anyone answer that question for me? Yes, mommy. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, mommy. Amen. I'm hearing the word of God. Thank you, ma'am. So as our sister said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear, the stronger our faith. The more we hear, the stronger we are rooted. The more we hear, the more of his virtue, the more of his glory that we can hear. May God help us in Jesus' name. In conclusion, we see that in Second Peter chapter two, verse one to the end, we learn that it is necessary after we have given our life to Christ, it is very necessary that we grow daily. We grow in this virtue that. God has already given to us freely that we try diligently because the Bible says the Lord um, give uh, the people that seek him diligently with their whole heart, the Lord will reveal himself unto them. So we should be diligent in seeking God so that at the end of the day, all this virtue that the Lord has freely given to us will be made manifest in our life. And I pray that we will all be partaker of this in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's take all that we have heard to the Lord in prayer. We are going to pray that, Father, all this virtue that you have given to us, really, Father, we pray. I personally, you pray to yourself personally, 
that I want to be partaker of it. The grace to take this thing, the grace to run with it, grant it unto me. The grace that I need to run this Christian race, to, for the life of Christ to be in me just like a normal life, that I will live this life without no struggle that the Lord will grant it unto me. Father, we pray that as we are here this morning, we've heard about your teaching this morning, we've heard about your word, we've heard about your, or your, your free will, that you have given us these promises that it is, it is, it is, um, it is, it is important that we, we, and it is important that we live this life and it is necessary that we live it and it is very, very real that we can live a life of uprightness, that we can live a life of um, godliness, that we can live a life like you, a life that is whole, a life that is, that is not less than you. That this is freely given to us, the grace to be able to live this life. We pray that you grant it unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. We pray that the newness of life that you have given us, we will keep it to the end in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's, let's come together. We are, we are done. Let's uh, join and we consider a quick summary of our lesson. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just want to know if there's any question in our midst, any question from our search of scriptures. Okay, I'm seeing one hand. Any other question from the youth side? The youths, they don't ask questions. It's always clear from the youth side. The young adult. It's perfect. No question. Okay, you can go ahead, sir. Good morning.
like precious faith with us through righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So my focus will be on the phrase like precious faith. According to some Bible scholars, um, the word is not, the phrase is not very descriptive because it did not give much light as to the quality of the things to which it is applied. So it brings to mind what, what, what was Peter actually talking about. Um, some scholars have said he was talking about two classes of faith. One faith is the one that him and the other disciples um, are used to, which is um, their developed intelligence. And then the other faith is referring to the infant, infantile faith of the recent believers to whom he may be speaking. So now the question is, what was Peter actually trying to, I mean, say to the new believers that are coming on board versus his portion of his developed faith? Or is he actually talking about something like, I mean, precious blood of Jesus? Because it matches. But when you say like precious faith, I mean, most Bible scholars say the word is not very descriptive. So if you can shed the light on it. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much for our text. Uh, Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1. I will read it again. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. So we've obtained what? Like precious faith. Uh, th this faith, when you receive it, we are simply talking about, you know, when we talk about faith, there are many, many dimensions of faith. So just, just the, the experience of salvation, the experience of transformation is referred to a faith. And it's talking about a precious faith. There's an experience, th this grace, and the experience of transformation is very precious. Amen? I mean, I, I can assure you, there are so many people who, who desire it. Some people have studied, and some professors have learned, and read very powerful books, but have never experienced it. It's very precious to have it. Praise the Lord. So, Peter is speaking to the precious... You can look at many dimensions, but really speaking to this experience of transformation. That, that's the, the summary of it all. And if you look at all that he's speaking, you see he's bringing it down to what you, what you have experienced. And he's also reminding the people what he experienced before. This experience of God, a very precious experience of transformation. So he's saying here, first, he's saying this one again, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. It's a faith that is uh, so precious from one person to the other. It's, it's it's, it's, uh, there are some people who have received salvation, but their salvation doesn't bring new life in them. That's not a precious one. He's saying, like precious, it's the one which has power to change lives, to transform lives. Really, that's the bottom line of all his explanation. You may talk about the faith as the doctrine, the teaching, uh, the word of God, and so on, but ultimately, in the context of this writer, Peter was speaking much about experience the transformation. And that's why he goes further to explain now about having all the virtues and the qualities associated with this transformation. So he's saying here that you have obtained like precious faith with us through what? The righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So this kind of uh, precious faith, that the word that brings transformation and gives you new life, you have received this one, it's precious, it's not common. And the fact that you have received it, you need to call it jealousy. So there might be many ways you may want, may want to interpret it and so on. But I think in my view, what would be important here is to link this, this one, this precious faith to the experience of transformation. That's why he's speaking about through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how you get it. So um, there are many ways the Bible talks about faith, but we need to understand normally when we talk about faith, there's a faith to believe God for miracle. There's a faith that speaks about the word of God is a faith as well. This is a faith. Anything containing for the faith. 
It's the word which was once delivered. So there's a word part. There's a faith to believe. There's a faith of an experience. And this is the one the writer is trying to emphasize here, uh, Peter. If you go to down to verse, uh, verse 18, it says, We have also more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take it, as unto the light that shineth in the darkness, until the dead dawn and the death arise in your hearts. So he's speaking about their own experience, knowing this face that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation, but the prophecy came out in all time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So he, he, he's trying to, to read, if you read further, you also hear, he was speaking about the experience he had in the mount. He was experiencing God. So Peter is rewriting from the perspective of, of experience. That's the main dimension here he's trying to bring out. And I pray God will help us to have much of the experience of God's grace in Jesus' name. So, I may not have answered it directly, but uh, I think the summary of it is the faith has got various dimensions. There's a faith of the word of God, which is the truth. There's a faith of experience of transformation. And this is the one is referred to a precious faith. There's a faith of believing God for a miracle. It's another type of faith. There may be other types of faith. But the one here is talking about more about the transformation. That's why you see it linking up to righteousness, and then the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, um, our lesson has many dimensions to just uh, learn from, um, or learn about this uh, uh, importance of growing in our Christian virtues. Uh, so I'll just summarize three key words here. Number one is the word vice. Vice. Vice is V-I-C-E. Not the vice president, but the vice of evil. The second word here is virtue. Yeah. Then the third one is victory. So let's look at the first one, vice. Uh, vice of evil grows naturally in any life. Let's go to our memory verse, Second Peter chapter 1. Let me read from verse 5. It says, and besides this, okay. giving all diligence. Before he mentioned that in verse 4, it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature. You, you, you see he's talking about the experience. The nature of God. That's all the faith we are speaking about here. And having escaped, he says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. So there is a vice here, corruption, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. All those things are connected with, and it's very common to anyone, until you come across Jesus Christ who changes your life. There will be vice in your life. And it speaks about the, the corruption, the lust of the flesh, and they are so rampant. If you have time, you can read Galatians chapter 5. Maybe let me read that very quickly for you. Galatians chapter 5. Or maybe before I read that, can we look at uh, the book of First um, uh, Peter chapter 2 from verse 11. You see the issue of uh, um, second First uh, Peter chapter 2 verse 11. The issue of, of, of lust, the vice, the vices that are always there. And even as when you're a believer, you have to be careful because there's always a, the pressure to bring you back First Peter, Second Peter chapter, sorry, First Peter chapter two, verse eleven. It says, in verse eleven, dearly beloved, born again. Thank God for you, my brother, my sister. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from what? Those are the vices. The vices that run through the flesh, the body. The body is not born again. The interest of the body may still be there. The desire for food, the desire for a lot of other things. And then he's saying here, dear beloved, I beseech you, you need to take effort, abstain from fleshly lusts, which do what? The war against your soul. When you are saved, you thank God I'm saved, but the battle is not yet done. Amen? There's still a war. The enemy wants us to not make heaven at last. So there's a war against the soul. He says you must abstain from the fleshly lusts. There are vices that war against the soul from continuing in the faith and so on. And for those who are not yet saved, are, these vices have 100% control on you until you come to Christ. Galatians chapter 5, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Galatians 5, verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh, these are the vices, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and this is a, these are sins that seem to be acceptable in society. If one is not uh, married yet, they just believe if a young boy, girl, immorality is normal until you are, you are married. They just believe that it's normal. These are vices in society. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, valiance, emulations, wrath, strife, 
seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I, have, I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not what? They can go to church, they can do a lot of good things, but the Bible says cannot inherit. That's, that's the danger of the vice. Vice limits or hinders people from making heaven. And the enemy wants even those who go to church to still obey him in some aspects by yielding to the vices that are there. God will help us to overcome in Jesus' name. So that's one here, the vice, and you see it in our text being picked from verse 4, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 4, the corruption in the world through lust. Number two word there is a, is a virtue. In our memory verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 5, it says, Beside this, giving all diligence, all diligence, um, like our teacher taught us, no, vice, vices, they don't need a lot of effort. They grow naturally. Uh, okay, so pity for some of the, our young people who have never seen vegetables grow. You just see them in the, in the, in the refrigerator or in the supermarket. But the reality of life is that when you are growing any product in this life, you plant them on the ground. You need the effort for them to grow and survive. But vice, vice never, they need fertilizer. You know that, eh? Vice, evil things, they don't need fertilizer. They, they just flow out. So as a Christian, if you're not careful, you just find that bad behaviors, they don't need a lot of, you don't need to pray to have bad behavior. Amen? Just, just, just sitting idle, doing nothing, vices will grow and increase. That's how it is. You, you don't need to come to church to have vice, bad behavior grow in you. The, the nature I go, the way you see them in the field, those of you grow, who have been to the, you have seen plants grow naturally. If you're growing may, any type of vegetable or anything you're planting in the field, the things you don't want, normally they grow faster. But the ones you want, the things you are planted, you want them to grow and uh, give you fruit. Those ones, you must take effort. Here we're being told we must, we must be able to be with, put in a lot of diligence. Amen? Diligence for the, for the good qualities, virtues, and so on. To be able to grow and come out, you need a lot of effort. If you put no effort, the chances are the vices overtake the, the virtues. And I pray God will help us to not allow that to happen in Jesus' name. So in simple terms, being a Christian is a good start of a journey. But to continue and avoid vice to overtake the virtues in us, we need to take effort. Giving all diligence, you must be adding all these virtues we have been told here. Add virtue, add knowledge, add temperance. If you are here, been here for long, you know what the Bible doctrines are. You know what we believe. Do, do we know them? You know, uh, somebody says, what you believe determines how you live. Amen? What you believe determines how you live. If you have studied the doctrines we have in our midis, I think those of you are in the confession, you are privileged to have it again. If you study them on your own or you have attended a meeting, or have gone through the training programs, the membership or anything with train and stone, to understand the doctrines, if you go through eschatology, understand what will happen, the events of the last days, and you believe that that is true, it will determine how you behave. Amen? There's something that you, you just know that because of, if that is true that I heard and the Bible says so, these are the true things, it will moderate your behavior. You'll be cautious how you behave because you know that if that teaching of God about heaven, about rapture, about hell is true, I must make sure I live right. So what you believe, so we need to add knowledge. Knowledge is very important. I know when you come to church, we normally teach generally, but there are some things that maybe systematically you need to go through all the doctrines to know what really they mean and the implications of your life. God will help us in Jesus' name. So the second issue here is that virtue requires effort. Effort to, to grow. He's saying here, giving all diligence. Every effort. Uh, it may cost you something. Time to pray time to read the word of God, time to develop yourself, just to, to, to know and read the scriptures once again. There may be so many things competing with our needs in life, but we need to find time for the word of God, and God will help us in Jesus' name. So, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And we're being told, told again uh, in verse, in verse uh, 6, and to, uh, uh, and, to faith, and to faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge what? Temperance. Temperance is self-control, a bit to restrain yourself. 
And normally when you are provoked, somebody has offended you. How you act or react, that's the grace that must be there. Virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, self-control, and to, to temperance, patience. Um, don't remember, I, don't, I mean, don't forget a young man got married. And uh, w w mar wedding was excellent, everything was good. And the wife now, the sweetheart, no, honeymoon is always good. After the honeymoon, you come back, the wife conceived, and, and that period of conception, it's like uh, some virus of laziness <laughs> caught up with the, our beloved sister. So instead of doing the work as she should, the brother comes from work, he discovers the wife hasn't cooked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He went to work and the wife wasn't, doing, she didn't clean plates, she didn't do all that. She was, she was just, there was a virus <laughs> that entered her because of, you no, know, you know, the pregnancy sometimes brings a lot of other dynamics. And he was very shocked that this could happen. He didn't expect it. But at that point, you must add to your faith what? Virtue. To virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, what thought you must have what? Patience. And to patience, what? Godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. If we add all these virtues, there's no situation that we say, this is too much for me. God will give you grace in Jesus' name. Well, uh, are they uh, brothers here? Oh, we thank God. When you get married, uh, a lot of dynamics may change, but grace will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. The person is still the same, but it's just that we need to have patience given the circumstances. Well, uh, let me close up with the last part here. The, the victory. What's the secret of victory? We're being told in our memory verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add, there must be increase. The moment we stop in growing and increasing, we lose our virtues. And God will help us to not lose our virtues in Jesus' name. There must be increase. Increase in the knowledge, increase in the love of God, increase in our Christian experiences, increase in fellowship. We have to take time to pray, study God's word and so on. All these things as we do them, God will give us a grace to overcome in Jesus' name. Well, time will not be, be sufficient for us. I'm just going to read one scripture and then we close with that. In the book of um, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's read that. Hebrews chapter 4. Yes, we need to uh, continuously have an increase in the grace of God in our lives. Hebrews chapter 4, let's read from verse, verse 16. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find what? Grace to help in time of need. There will be a time of need where you will be provoked to, to react wrongly as a believer. But the, that's the point you need to manifest the grace of God. To help you at the time of need. God will give you the grace. The virtues will come out in Jesus' name. Let's rise together as we pray. Let's commit ourselves in the hands of the Lord. Uh, so many things. Some, some things don't need effort. Vices, if you don't come to church, they just grow. They don't need you to come to church. If you're going to make it, you need to take effort. Vices, they don't need energy. They don't need fertilizer. They just grow. But for you to be able to have the virtues of God, you need to take effort. Let's talk to God in prayer. God, help me that I will increase my grace and knowledge of God by approaching to God. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we will obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. There's a time when you need the grace of God and it requires that you are prepared ahead of time. Acquiring that grace, drawing that grace from God, your devotion to God, your study, fellowship, gathering together. Don't stay away. You are worshiping online for two years. You are still online. That's a, a, a transition, the risk of getting out of the way. Let's talk to God in prayer. It takes effort, energy. It comes at a cost for you to continue in the faith. God will give us a grace. Praise Him.
God give us the grace to make sure our characters, our attributes are in accordance with God in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up his name. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. The Bible says in the book of Psalm that, Oh, magnify the name of the Lord with me and exalt his name forever. If you know that the Lord has been indeed good in your life, if you know that he is wonderful, brethren, would you lift up your mouth this morning, open your mouth and bless his name. Daddy, we thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are kind. We thank you because you are faithful. Lord, you've been wonderful. You've been good. We thank you from January, and this is the first Sunday in the month of November. Lord, it has been your grace. It has been your mercy. It has been your awesome power. Lord, we cannot do this on our own, but of your benefit, we are alive today. We are alive today. Thank you, the one who died on the cross for our sin, that you and I might be saved, that you and I might have the liberty that we have right now to worship his name. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Most high God, we give you praise. We exalt your name, the King of kings and the Lord of law. The one who rose on the third day, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Only one of Israel, we bless you. Abba, we worship your name. We worship your name. Jehovah, 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 Nisi, our sustainer, our righteous God, our healer. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. Our mouth cannot even be enough to praise you. Our, the hairs on our head cannot be enough to thank you. Lord, we thank you for the benefit of your, of, of your presence in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
lift our hands and our dancing offering unto the Lord. Amen. Your hands.
praise the Lord. 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 Praise
Oh
me shout hallelujah. Remain in the mood of worship. Let's begin to worship Him. He's a faithful God. In Him, there's no variableness. In Him, there's no shadow of turning. Here we are in the very first Sunday of the penultimate month of this year. Come to think of it, 10 months gone and less than 60 days to go. He has been faithful to us. The Lord has been our refuge. He has really been a present help in time of need. Worship him this morning. Give him glory for his mercy upon your life. Somebody said if you are not thankful enough for what he has done, at least be grateful for the dangers you have escaped, the sicknesses you have escaped. The misfortunes you have escaped, the accidents you have escaped, just by mercy. It's not by, own, by your own righteousness, it's the, of the lost mercy we are not consumed. Worship him for his faithfulness. Jehovah is his name. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is present with us. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord God our banner. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. Worship him for the provisions you have enjoyed from the beginning of the year to date. Worship him for the intervention, his intervention that you have enjoyed from the beginning of the year to your date. Worship him because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the one that brought you into this year and is able to see you through the remaining 60 days if it tarries. He is able and more than able. Like Apostle Paul said, he said, I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed into his hand against that day. Have you committed anything into his hands? Worship him because he's able and more than able to preserve, to keep you, to keep that which I have committed into his hands against the hand. Worship him because he's able to sustain you. In Jesus' precious name, we worship. I pray the Lord who has brought us safely into this year, if it tarries, he will see us through the remaining days of the year in Jesus' name. We want to unite our faith together as we pray for the mission work in the Philippines. I will start with the missionary that has been sent there, our original overseer. We want to pray for him. The Bible says, faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. He has been called for this assignment. We want to pray that the faithfulness of God will remain with him. In the name of Jesus. In the daytime, in the evening time, the Lord God of heaven will stand by him. The Lord God of heaven will back up the mission work with signs and wonders following. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will send mission helpers to him on the field. It's not easy to be a missionary in a foreign land. The Lord will send mission helpers. To him in the name of Jesus. The Lord will back up the mission, the mission work with outstanding testimonies every day, every week. There will be outstanding testimonies and souls will be established in God's kingdom. Souls will be established in God's kingdom. The Lord will multiply the work and the work will grow in grace in the name of Jesus. The Lord will stand by him. He will not falter. He will not fall. He will not, he will not be sick. The protection of God will show over him. The Lord God of heaven will prosper the mission work by himself. Faithful is he that call it, who also will do it. Our desire for him is to see him healthy. Our desire for him is to, is to see the mission work prosper in his hand. Our, minute, our desire for the mission work is for the mission work to expand and for the name of Christ to be lifted high. And as the name of Christ is being lifted high, that souls of men in the Philippines will be drawn to Christ. In 
Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. The scripture, lastly, the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I want to pray, you know as much as I do what is going on in this nation this week. I want to pray, irrespective of opinions, irrespective of uh, decisions, Bible says, if we want to lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, mark the word, quiet, peaceable life, godliness. And of course, you know there's a pandemic of ungodliness in our land. But we want to pray, Jesus, have your way. This week, have your way. Let godliness prevail. Let peace prevail. Let honesty prevail in the name of Jesus. You and I can secure the land. You and I can stand in the gap. Let godliness prevail. Let honesty prevail. Let your peace prevail. Let your will prevail in this week in this country in the name of Jesus. Take control of the affairs of this nation during this dicey situation. Father, take control of decision, of the decision makers. Take control of the policy makers. Let godliness prevail. Let righteousness be promoted. Let there be peace in this land. Look, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you know the Lord has answered your prayer, say louder, Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and tell him how you are welcome into his presence. It's a pleasure to be in his presence. Let's have a seat in his presence. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to recognize people that are worshiping with us, worshiping with us for the first time. If you are in the sanctuary this morning, and this is your first time of worshiping with us, I want to recognize you, I want to bring you our pastor's greetings. Anybody in the sanctuary worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time of worshiping with us. I can do better by rising on your feet, rising on your feet. And what do we say to them, church? Welcome in the name. You can rise on your feet for better recognition. a favor by rising up again to tell us your name. I want to get closer to you. I want to know you better. Uh, my name is, oh, sorry. My name is uh, Chika Iwe. You are welcome to our miss in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank just you. as we just finished singing for you, the glory of the Lord will be resident in your life. And the glory of the Lord will go with you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are joining us from, on the various uh, social media platform, uh, please we also want to recognize you if this is your first time worshiping with us on YouTube, on Zoom. Uh, can you do us a favor? Please send us your name and the city from which you are worshiping with us from using the chat handle of the social media platform and the representative of the church leadership will get in touch with you. At this moment, I would like to step aside for more information on our weekly services. Over to your media.
Welcome to church. We are so glad to have you here this morning. This is Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. There will be many opportunities to fellowship with us during the week, so please listen closely to the following announcements. On Sundays, we begin with intercessory prayers at 8.30 a.m. and the service starts at 9 a.m. Later on Sunday evenings, we meet in smaller units for house caring fellowship. Make sure to get connected to your fellowship unit before the end of today's service. We believe the Holy Bible is the true word of God. That is why we meet every Monday at 6.20 p.m. as our founder, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, takes us through the scriptures. Join us this Monday as we study the word together. If you're a senior citizen, I invite you to come join us on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. for an evening with Jesus. During this time, we encourage ourselves in the Lord as we worship with one another. Seniors, don't miss this time of fellowship. All children are welcome to join the kids' Bible discussion every Thursday at 6 p.m. This is a fun time where we learn about Jesus, His Word, and how we can live for Him. Join us this Thursday. I hope to see you there. Youths, get excited for your weekly fellowship every Thursday at 7 p.m. It's a time for us to study God's Word together so that we can be all that He has called us to be. What a great place to be. You can't miss it for anything. Fridays are a time for revival service where we hope to be encouraged and strengthened as we continue to seek the Lord. Join us this Friday at 6.20 p.m. for a time of seeking the Lord. Every third Friday is our community fellowship. Make sure to be part of this avenue for soul winning and let's impart our word for the Lord. Offering time, blessing time. Blessing time, offering time. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 tells us to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruit of our increase. If you brought tithes and offerings, please bring them out now. We we'll rise up on our feet as we honor the Lord with our substance. The scripture said, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Whatever you have in our forms of tithes and offering, let's dip our hands into our pockets and raise it as a prayer on it. Gracious Redeemer, we thank you for the provisions that we enjoy from time to time. Thank you for your love unto us. Thank you for the blessings upon our lives. And out of the abundance you've given to us, we brought this token. We pray that you sanctify the gift and use it for your glory in Jesus' name. For as many who are willing to give but have none, this morning we unite our faith together with them. And for every one of us that this new week we open up with new blessings, new mercies for every one of us in Jesus' name. Continue with us as we continue in service. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We'll drop our offering inside the offering bags. And for those watching us on the various social media platform, please kindly make use of the connection links uh, being displayed on the screen to submit your offering accordingly. We also have a couple of uh, uh, announcements. Uh, let's pay attention as we collect our offerings. All choir members should please, and all media members as well, should please uh, know that they'll be meeting with the Haru tonight by 9 p.m. Choir members, whether uh, officially singing now or not, and all media crew, please meet with the Haru 9 p.m. on Zoom tonight. Also want to inform us that our community fellowship is uh, for this month will be coming up November 15. Uh, let's mark our calendar and let's make ourselves available. Uh, it's going to focus on a faith-based approach of financial empowerment. Uh, it's going to feature some other talks that can help us to be whole financially and of course doing the will of God in this contemporary time. So uh, that week is also a week of outreach. The Lord is counting on you and myself. The world is in a dilemma. Even unbelievers in the world know that something is wrong with this age and time. And before the curtain is drawn, uh, please, let's reach out to people around us. So more information will be coming to us uh, with reference to the outreach. Let's make ourselves available. To reach out to this dying world before the time is over. And I pray that God will count us worthy. God will find us, find us faithful as well in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, with the permission of the pastor, this has been discussed earlier. 
uh, those who want to dig deeper and want to uh, embark on the discipleship class, uh, the discipleship class has been uh, slated for this month. So if you want to join, please wait at the end of the service. You can see any of the Hosha and they'll give you direction accordingly for the discipleship class. I pray as we continue, and our Lord will continue to bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Uh, the flyer for the community fellowship should be displayed by the media uh, very shortly. Uh, while we are waiting on them, let's just turn our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 19 and 20 of our Bible reading today. Matthew chapter 19 and 20. Right, I'll take it from here. Matthew chapter 19. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male? And female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery, and whoso married her which is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs, which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs, which, may, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of everyone's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then were they brought unto him little children, and he, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that the rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And 
Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which ye have followed me in the generation when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. The men that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into the vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, This last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Is not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine his and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine I evil because I am good? So the last shall be the first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem to the twelve disciples, apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, and to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that this my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand, and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand, and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, for whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. 